What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of The Wiley Show. This is a Saturday edition of The Wiley Show. I'm excited. Saturday, 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 Saturday. All right. We did the pre show on Station Head, which I enjoy. Now we're on YouTube, which I'm going to have an amazing good time. Uh, we back. We got a lot of subjects to get into. So let's start with the show. First and foremost, I want to say this is going to be an iconic show. So we got to bring uh, Mayor Eric Adams back on the docket right now because it's very important to get him on the show again because he did an interview with Angela Yee and he said that he's innocent of the accusations, the allegations against him with this woman. He said he don't know this woman. He's a man of integrity. He loved women, uh, support women. He would never harm women. And this woman filed this person filed the lawsuit on the last day that the law was going to run out. And I've said it publicly that the mayor of New York is innocent. Um, I got a lot of pushback from it and I stand on it. Anybody that filed a lawsuit back 30, 40 years, don't believe them um, because it's difficult. I believe we should not believe them instantly. We should do our due diligence but I do give it an ultimate side eye if you wait in the 20th century and we're in the 21st century and you want to file this. So I am happy that Mayor Eric Adams have done interview with Angela Yee. And I know he's innocent. I feel it in my bone. I feel it in my spirit that he's innocent. This person is nothing but a tool to try to take down a successful black politician. And any time that you are a black politician in one of the largest cities in the world, you automatically fall victim to false accusations. And a scripture said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It didn't say the weapon wasn't going to form. And so this is what's going on with Mayor Adams. He is dealing with false, evil, wicked spirits trying to get him off his A-game. They want him to resign for being mayor, but he didn't commit a crime. And a lot of folks is upset because he's speaking truth to power, especially against those that are bringing illegal migrants, illegal people to the city of New York. And by law, due to his predecessor, he have to feed them, give them shelter, and he can't deport them according to the law. And when he started to speak up against, you know, President Biden and the government, the federal government, now you see this accusation picking up legs. Let's be clear. This is an election year. And this crisis is bankrupting New York, is bankrupting uh, Chicago, so many of these black-led cities. And Mayor Eric Adams said, listen. We got to call out the federal government because he has spent billions with a B and he only got a couple of million dollars from the government, from the federal government. This is a federal issue. The borders is open and he's a Democrat, black Democrat. He had said on, on Angela E that the borders are open. These are open borders. And it's a it's definitely destroying New York. New York is already dealing with poverty. They're dealing with high costs of rent, rat infested, crime on the trains, crime on public transit all in the city. And their governor decided to dispatch the National Guard to bring down the crime. They also have a migrant crisis. But who is paying for that? The taxpayers in New York. New York is paying for it. And already the people in New York have to make almost $300 an hour to afford shelter. Apartments is very expensive. You have people that live in New York. I know someone living in New York, work seven days a week. They only get the rest on a Sunday. They go to one job working eight hours, sleep on the train, on the bus, go work another eight hours, then go work somewhere else just to afford living in New York. That's how expensive New York, especially if you want to stay in a beautiful park, of the city where it's economically there and less crime. 
You have to spend a lot of time at work. And this is hard for people. And now you having people with no rights. They're illegal. They came to this country illegally. And they're getting resources upon resources. I feel that the city of New York, City Council, have failed their citizens. There is no way in hell that we should, that they should have passed an ordinance to give these illegals shelter. It should be a new ordinance in the city of New York, in the city of Chicago. Throw away the sanctuary city. You come here, we will deport you back. They're doing it to the people in Haiti. President Biden administration is deporting those black folks from Haiti. I'm going to say it one more time. They're deporting the people from Haiti. I'm going to say it another time. They are deporting the folks from Haiti. So if if this if they're deporting the people from Haiti, why are we allowing these people from Venezuela to come here, from Mexico to come here, from all parts of those Spanish-speaking countries come here because they are deporting the black folks from Haiti? And if it ain't good for the Haitian people to be here because they came here illegally, we must deport all illegal people that came to this country illegally. If my brothers from Haiti is not allowed to stay in this country, work and get food and shelter, free apartments and vouchers, then it's not good for the people from Venezuela, from Mexico, from any part of their countries to come here. They should be deported back to where they came from. If it's not good for my black brothers and sisters from Haiti, then the rest of the people that come here, deport them back as well. And see, the reason why I'm calling it out, President Biden and, and, and Kamala Harris, because, again, if you are dragging the Haitian people back to their native land because they came in illegally, okay, it's the law. But we must follow the law with everybody. There should not be a aggression on the black folks from Haiti. And then we're giving sympathy to the light-skinned, half-white illegals that come to this country. And let's be clear, New York, it was a sister in New York, and Tariq Nashi post on his ex, it was illegal tried to snatch the purse of a black woman and he didn't understand that this black woman know how to throw them hands. So she proceeded to defend her property in herself and decided to use her Muhammad Ali fist against that illegal entity. And he was saying in Spanish, I'm sorry, and whatever how he said, he was begging for mercy in Espanol. But why did you think it was okay to snatch the purse of a black woman? And again, I personally feel that every government entity, if you took an oath, your job is to defend the Constitution and stand up for citizens first. I wouldn't have an issue giving illegals apartments and food and shelter if you were doing it for American citizens. There's plenty American citizens that have food insecurity, housing insecurity, healthcare insecurity. And if we're not urging with speed to give American citizen housing, food, assistance, then we shouldn't be doing it for illegal people. There is millions of black folks that would love to get vouchers from the government, rental assistance, food assistance, job placement assistance. Who would want that deal and we American citizens? Why are we giving it to people that don't speak English, broken the law, why are we giving them everything? That's twisted up. And this is why I tell folks when you go to the ballot, don't just yell and scream, vote. Only thing you're doing to make a lot of noise, if you want to make some things happen, vote these people out that don't want to do for you and your interests. 
and you need to call your senator and your and you ask them on the phone, sir, ma'am, why do you think it's okay to give these folks shelter and housing and food? What about American citizens? You need food security. That's plenty of people with children have to spend a lot of money on daycare costs. Won't you love the government to help you pay, help you assist you with daycare costs? They're doing it for the illegals. Why can't they not do it for the American citizens? Especially those American citizens that did not break the law, that did not come and broke and came in illegally. Everything is legal. They never broke in the law and they're not getting a handout from the government, but the government is giving a handout to people that have broken the law. And so to Mayor Eric Adams for calling it out, now he got an allegation that he me too the woman back when he was a police officer in 1992. That was in the 20th century. We are now in 2024 in the 21st century. We're in a whole new century and some woman is accusing this black man of those vicious crimes. But you didn't really hear about it until he starts standing up and asking for a check from the government. Uh, now these allegations, poof, came up. But again, sanctuary cities is going to hurt black people first. Said again, sanctuary cities, anytime illegals invade our country, our cities, who resources gonna go to them first? The black resource that pulled to go to black folks that's poor is going to them. Now, already the poor black people in the city of Chicago and New York really didn't get their proper resources. They've been on a waiting list and some are still on the waiting list today. And yet people from another country get to get an apartment, get to get a stipend, food, medical care. And here you are struggling health wise. You're struggling to get an apartment. You're struggling to feed you and your family. But folks, invaded this country illegally get all that and some cell phones hot showers three meals a day the school the public school system especially in chicago have to get spanish-speaking teachers your children been struggling in them schools forever they would love to learn how to speak espanol but they would tell you we can't afford to do bilingual classes but now that these illegals invaded your city now the chicago public school system is hiring teachers that speak spanish this is why i tell my black brothers and sisters, to do not just create noise, just to be creating noise. We must create action. We must call out these people that think it's okay to give them resources and give us absolutely nothing. They should not get our vote. They should not get our hand. And to, to our president, President Biden, and on this issue, I think you have, not think, I know you have failed this issue. And to the Republican Party that is in power in Congress, you all are so evil that President Biden and many of the people in the Senate that are Republican have brokered a deal, an immigration bill that will help fix this broken immigration system. I believe it was the most conservative bill you could ever get. But because y'all are loyal to Trump, 
that in so many indictments, you all said, no, we're not going to fix the, the immigration problem. I just think it's foolish that you all have a problem. You don't want to fix it because you're loyal to Trump. You want Trump to win. Then you got a, a person in, in the house, uh, uh, Taylor Green, Marjorie Taylor Green. She filed uh, uh, some in the house that she want to call for the removal of the of the speaker of the house because he broke her deal, the spending bill, I believe over a trillion dollars and there was no money for the border. But you already know that Trump don't want any money for the border because he wanted to be a mess because that's what he's going to run on in the general election. But she filed to get the speaker removed if this happened that will be yet another speaker that have been removed within the first two years of the republicans having control of the house that's a disaster but the republican party is so divided it's only a few a hand few that can cause chaos because they have a slim majority in the house very slim so about three or four people can derail the entire process and because their original speaker, he broke a deal to get installed that one person can challenge the speakership and call for a vote to remove you from power. Oh, that's so wicked. And so when I talk with people, and especially my brothers, my black brothers and sisters about politics, they always look at the president, but also tell me it's a lot of power that goes on in the House of Representatives. You got to look at the House. You got to look at the Senate. That's a very powerful body that's not getting enough press and a lot of folks not educated on that power. That's a lot of power there. It's a lot of power there. You must know your representative. You must know uh, you, you, the power that they hold in that body. That's a very powerful body. A lot of people bypass that. They be looking at Biden. But you got to understand, Biden really can't do nothing without the House because they got the check. They passed the budget. The Senate, the House, and a lot of them that have been in there for years will tell the president, we've been here. We're going to be here when you're gone. At best, you're going to be here eight years. I've been here 40. At best. At best, at best, they would tell the president, whomever is in office, especially those, I call them career politicians that have been in there for about 10, 20, 30 years, they would tell the president, listen, we've been here, we're going to be here when you're gone. And so that's why a lot of presidents got to know how to maneuver in the Senate and also the House because a lot of them, a lot of the people that's been there, been there for more than 20 years. And they do have a lot of influence, a lot of power, a lot of things that they use. And so Eric Adams is dealing with a system that is designed for New York to be broken, is designed for Chicago to be broken. That is one of the most powerful base for the Democratic Party, New York, Chicago, California. Those are major power base for the Democratic Party. If it's chaos in those cities, then that's a way for the Republicans to take over those cities. And that's the long term plan. But the Democrats, honestly, I believe they want this to come out because they think we're going to be in office. We want to open up citizenship. And if they open up citizenship and allow those illegal to become citizens, it's a, it's a theory that they're using. I'm not saying it's going to be real, just a theory uh, that if they pass a law to make the fast track them to become citizens, they could become eligible to vote. And they feel like they would be dedicated voting block for the Democratic Party. So everybody have an interest for these illegals being here. Republicans got an interest. We want them here so we can take over and black folks can be discouraged to vote. And then we win. Democrats feel like this is a long term plan. We welcome in here. Because we're going to take it off the House and the Senate. We could propose a bill for a fast track citizenship so they could become voters. And then we can guarantee to stay in power for the next 100 years. So everybody have a plan of what they want to do with the illegals. 
and, and the people that's out the plan is the black folks that's already citizens. It's already citizens. And this is why black folks got to wake up. The NAACP, the Urban League, all of these, the Freemasons, all the Divine Nine, every single so-called black organization have to educate the black people and tell them the power and tell them the plan. I'm going to tell you the plan. The plan is for us to continue to get screwed. That's the plan. The plan, they want us to be distracted with celebrity gossip and don't look at the plan of us getting replaced. And we got to be up there. We we got to be in tune. We got to we got to call it out, and we got to really really have people in there that's going to fight for our interests. And this is about our interests. This is about our agenda. Who is going to is for our interests? Who is going to fight for us? And and this is why I will be in the next uh, broadcast more that's coming up. I'm going to tell you the people that would be good for Texas, good for New York, good for California, these people that's not good, that should be voted out, that have not done good at all. I'm going to tell you who voted yes for what bill, who voted no. Media don't do that. They need to put the picture up of this congressperson or this senator and say this person voted yes, 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 yes for this, and this person voted no. You need to know that. You need to know who's voting yes to help you and who's voting no to take away your rights? The media don't do enough of that. They don't show people enough. Like, they showing Eric Adams with his allegations. Okay, let's throw Eric Adams out. Let's also show people that have voted no to give to increase the minimum wage. Let's also show people that voted no to help give you, to help Medicaid expansion to help you. Let's also showcase the people that say no to help with, with rent control. Let's also broadcast them too. Let's make them famous too. Because at the end of the day, that is what's harming you. Not these allegations with Eric Adams. What's harming you is these people that sitting in this office, sitting in the chamber, saying no to your growth. And that's why you are going through pure hell at your jobs. Because the laws is designed for you to go through that hell. Now, if you had a group of people that pique your interest, can change the entire thing. That's why we got to educate. Voter education is very important. And this is why Biden must educate. But they don't want you to be educated. They want you to be stupid. Because stupid people, we can control. We can dominate. We can steal from stupid people. But smart, intelligent, politically aware folks, we got to move a certain way. That will challenge. They don't like to talk to people that know every bill that they have. Vote no or yes. And you challenge them on it. They don't like it when you talk to a person to say, well, on page 12, you put on that paragraph to for forbid me to get a raise, blah, 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 blah. They don't like to talk to them type of people. They don't like to go to them type of shows where you, whatever you sign, you bring up the bill. Okay, um, Senator, sir, you did propose that bill, correct? Oh, yes, I did. But can we talk about one second on page 14 paragraph, the third paragraph. Can you explain to me what that means? And you already know the answer, but you want to make sure. And they go, oh, oh, well, oh, mm, oh, mm. hello, sir. But, oh, 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 can you answer that? Why have you been in the office 10 years? You always voted no for minimum wage. Do you think minimum wage should at least be $10 and 10 cents instead of $7 and 25 cents? You got to ask these people that, but they don't want you to be educated about that. They don't want you to be educated about the funding, about the grants, about Medicaid expansion, or how important that is. They don't want you to be educated about that. They want you to be talking about Cardi B, Nikki, Eric Adams' allegations. But they, but what about the power? Because I do get to talk about that. New York, the city is still passing bills to fund powerful people, and poor folks are still suffering. The city council, his city council can pass an ordinance today and say, you know what? We're going to bring the sanctuary city to the voters and let the voters vote yes or no to it. If they vote no, then let's throw away the sanctuary city. Meaning that if you come to New York, we will work with the federal agents to deport you back. They still keep in New York a sanctuary city. Who is it hurting? Black folks. When, when Eric Adams, let's put his picture, let's throw away the allegations for a second. 
when he wanted to put the illegal people in a white neighborhood, you know what the white folks did when they build that shelter in a white neighborhood? They protested. Not only did they protest, they sued New York. Then the judge said, you can't put them in this area. We're going to get a temporary restraining order. They still try to do it. Them white folks was protesting. They was loud. They ain't welcome in my neighborhood. Get out of my neighborhood. Get out. Kids was out there yelling, screaming. They told the mayor, we don't want them in our neighborhood. They said it right there in, 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 in that area. They challenged and sued the city. Let's go to Chicago. They tried it. This black couple, a husband and wife, black, sued the city of Chicago, said, we don't want them in South Shore. We don't want them in our high school. We don't want them. That's our resource. And they sued the city. So people is waking up. It's no different when I was watching um, Shirley Chisholm, the movie. And she, she was the first African-American woman to run for off run for president. So Congress, Congresswoman from New York, she decided to run for president in the 70s. And they did not want her to debate. They said, you can't debate, blah, blah, blah. So Shirley Tism told her team, sue the networks, all, the big three networks, ABC, CBS, sue them. Sue them? She said, yes. So she sued the network, this white college student, he was taking law class. He went to the clinic and to the law clinic at, at, on his college campus. And he they explained to him, well, if you lose, that's a win because it can go to the appellate court. But if the appellate court agree with you, this can help. Shirley Chisholm, if you don't, this can harm. So he went on to the appellate court agreed that she have to be on this debate stage. And I believe ABC gave her like 30 minutes uninterrupted, gave her a 30 minute interview. And the, the reason why I, I go back to that it's because this is why bl black folks that get in power, you get you get the good ones that give you the T of how to maneuver in this system. And that iconic move, it, it helped her, even though she didn't win, but it birthed that, wow, the possibility of you can, a black woman can, become president if you have a great message, if you know how to campaign, if you know how to raise money, if you know how to maneuver. And for her to dominate in, in that era in the 70s, that's like a couple of years after Dr. King deletion and after many other our leaders were deleted in the 60s, for her to run was an iconic, legendary move. And I think everybody needs to read uh, uh, read about uh, Shirley Tis uh, uh, Chisholm and, and watch that docu, uh, watch that um, biopic on Netflix. But when I come back to 2024, it's still the same issue of people trying to take away our rights, don't want us to have a voice, and they want us to be uneducated. They they, they want us to just create noise with no action. No, you got to have an action plan. And that's something in this generation where we must act and we must know what goes on in the city hall. This is why in the city of Chicago... The mayor there, his press team, they removed us from the email list. Now, we was getting updates about what the mayor was doing. They removed us. Um, they're not answering our emails. We want to sit in the office, uh, the press, uh, and the press pool to ask him some questions. So you know what I did? I created more noise. And I said, hey, uh, to, the, to, to the mayor. Uh, I, I tagged him on Twitter. I said, I don't believe that the mayor is an ally and a friend to Black-owned media. If, if he is, why is I'm being prevented of getting press credentials to be in City Hall when I have a Black-owned show, when I talk to Black people every single day, and I'm Black, born and raised in Chicago, why can I not be in there and ask the mayor some questions? Why can I not question him about his so-called bring Chicago home that have failed? His so-called uh, tax plan, his so-called safety plan that is that is failing the city of Chicago, his so-called investments that he said he's going to bring multiple investments to the South and the West Side, which have not have happened yet. And so I will continue to fight. And if we have to take it a step further, legally, we will. Because I feel like you should not prevent Black-owned media to come to question people in power. The people need to know what is going on in City Hall. Not by just CBS, NBC, because there are limited on what they talk about. They're not going to talk to black people in a way for them to understand 
or what is going on to prevent them from getting A, B, and C. They need to know the auto women and auto men that is doing for them, and they also need to know those that are not doing for them, that need to be removed and vote out of office. So you need to be there. And somebody needs to be in the hallway, so when they see you coming, you ask the question, hey, hey, auto men such and such, why did you vote against this ordinance to help your black constituents in your war? Hey, auto men so and so, why did you vote against this? When I had a chance to interview, give me one second. When I, I was outside, we did a peace. It was, it was a peace march, and um, my, Brother Muhammad, he called, invited me to come, and I went, and the Ottoman was there. Ottoman Lopez was there. And we asked Ottoman Lopez. I said I had a question, and we started talking. I had multiple questions. I asked him about the sanctuary city. I asked him about the city, about you know the migrants, and about how he didn't agree with them getting all the resources. I, I kept asking questions after question after question. Because he was so shocked. Oh, I thought you were just going to ask me one question. No, bro, I'm going to ask you a couple of more questions. And then he followed me on Twitter. And then I had more questions for him. And I said, I want to get you on another interview because I got some more information that I do want to ask you. And where do you stand? And what is your thoughts on this? And the reason why I like to ask questions publicly, because you are a public figure. And I want people to understand the power that goes on in City Hall. Because they have to understand how they move and how the backdoor deals and how dirty it can get. But somebody from media have to go educate the black folks that is on the outside of what's going on on the inside. They have to educate. And the reason why a lot of black folks are just not that in tune with politics is because it's so simple. They feel that politicians have not done enough for them to feel that they have gotten something from the deal. They don't feel like they gotten enough. And I agree. It's more that should be done for the abandoned buildings in New York, the rat infested neighborhoods in New York, the rat infested, dirty abandoned buildings in Chicago. And so we must also broadcast and talk about that stuff over and over again because we can't stop and we must educate and we must show the resources of them and what is going on in the city of New York. It's failing the black people. It's failing the black people. It's failing black New Yorkers. And the reason why are you just talking about black people? Because number one, I am a black owned media company. My interest is for black folks. My voice, I want, I, I'm talking to my people. If anybody else, y'all get somebody that's going to stand for y'all. But the problem is they want black media folks just to speak about, just to speak for everybody. No, I'm not, that ain't with me. What keep me up? at night is how to make it better for my black brothers and sisters, my nieces that who are all black and I stand up for them. And the power of black owned media is, is needed. And the reason why we was able to get what we got is because of the work of the black owned media companies, the black owned newspaper, the freedom, uh, the freedom papers that from all the way from Frederick Douglass, all the way down to the black papers in Chicago, the black newspaper from Baltimore, the black newspapers and all over. It was black media that really called truth to power to the point back in World War I or World War II, the government wanted to arrest black owned media. These black journalists, because they was broadcasting and exposing the lynching that was going on back in the 20th century. And the government was like, we got to arrest y'all for treason only because the black journalists were speaking truth to power. Speaking truth to power. And so this is why you must study Black-owned giants, Black-owned media giants, and use that in 2024 because back then they did not have social media. Now they only had grassroots where you had to sell newspaper and knock on doors. They didn't have Twitter, Instagram, X, TikTok, Snapchat. They didn't have any of that back in the day. That didn't exist. It was mailing at best and knocking on doors word of mouth at best. So that's why I'm calling it out. And Mayor Adams, I feel like it is something bigger. And, and I'm looking at what he was talking about. Again, to my point about Mayor Adams, he was saying to his constituents, say, hey, it's against the law for me to do It's the law. By law, I have to do this. And the federal government needs to do more. I'm glad he said it. Because a lot of people just want to just, oh, it's just a Mayor Adams. He had failed the city. No, the, the federal government could do more. But if you know anything about the federal government, they really can't do anything right. Well, with the president can't, he got to get it from the Congress. And Congress ain't willing to write no check to help black-owned cities, Democrat cities. They ain't going to do it. 
If they do, they're not going to do that. Why would we, to those Republicans, why would they help struggling black cities? Democrat. Our, their sole job, we want to be back in office in 2025. We want the White House. We want the Senate. We want more seats in the House. We want more seats in the state houses across the nation. They have lost a lot of their gains due to Trump failed um, picks that he wanted to represent his men. A lot of his candidates have failed because they was too extreme to, 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 to the mainstream voters. It was just too extreme, and he tried it, and all of them pretty much lost. Um, so that's why uh, the Republicans got a slim majority in the House, and they did not take over the Senate because of Trump. His so-called MAGA candidates, they were whack. They they couldn't, they couldn't, they, they was too whack. They trying to be like Trump. Yeah, Trump is great in a certain aspect, but he did lose. And that message may not work in Arizona. It may not work in the state of Philadelphia. It may not work in the state of Michigan. So you got to know how to have a tailored message in that particular state, especially if you're running for Senate. So you got to be careful. A lot of them MAGA people, they flopped. They got whooped because they tried to be like Trump. We only got one Trump. We don't need another one with a wig. And that's why they lost multiple seats. And then they just lost another seat in New York. The one that lied. He got caught up in so many lies. And finance broke so many laws. He lost. And now Democrat got that seat in New York. So now they're a majority in the, the House even slimmer. So we can go on and on and on. We can go on and on and on and on and on. And so we will continue to stand up for what is right. And what is right, black people want representation. They want resources. They want to be able to get a check. The same resource y'all give it to them, illegal immigrants. And I've told the city of Chicago. I said, why can't you not give it to black Chicagoans that need housing? Where's they stifling? Where's they check? Where's these nonprofit organizations for black people that are suffering in Chicago? Crickets. No response from the city of Chicago. Crickets. But y'all giving it to people that don't speak English. Pookie, Ray Ray, Miss Barbara, Samuels, Sam, Brianna, Keisha, Larisha. They want checks too. What they checks? They would love to get six months rent paid where they can get on their feet. If anybody should be able to get it, it should be the black people. We helped build the city of Chicago. We helped build this country. Where's our help in hand? Come on, somebody. Cricket. I guess they said, uh oh, we got to take this black man off the email list. We don't want no more questions for this black man. He too real for us. He asks us very direct questions for the $9,000 housing allowance. And he talk too much. He off the email list. Good, but I still can call and I'm still leaving voicemails. And I still reach out to all the Ottoman people all in the city. I ain't going to stop. You may remove me from an email list, but you can't stop me from dialing them numbers and leaving voicemails and calling y'all every day, Monday through Friday. I know all y'all schedules. I know all those, and I keep leaving letters. And you can keep saying no, but that makes me go stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And I come back. And then when you open up this type of ordinance, you want to open this up for this, this, and this, and this. I let the people know in Chicago, hey, they're doing this. This ain't right. It's going to harm you. And I call these the black ones out. I come at them hard because they black. I don't play. You black, you can't get lazy and don't do right. Don't you get in here trying to scam you black. I'm going to call you out first. Get a backbone in that city hall. And I call out Mayor Johnson because he black. And I said in this inauguration, he was talking about the soul of Chicago. I said, brother, the soul you talk about, you erasing the soul of black folks by giving checks to illegal people. So I called Mayor Johnson. I had an attorney on my show. He said, Wally, give him a chance. I said, I can't not give him a chance. 
That's the problem. We want to wait. No. Day one, he needs to do his job for black people. It's been a year, over a little piece over a year, he have done worse than Lori Lightfoot. COVID money. Give me a second. That the federal government gave to the city of Chicago for COVID. He took it. I want to give it to the migrants. No, that money is for citizens in Chicago. That's their money. That ain't for no illegal people. You better go call Mexico and Venezuela and tell them to write a check. That's for the citizens in Chicago. That's not for them. No. Ah, and didn't even want to talk to the representative. Alderman um, Lopez said he didn't even call us and tell us. Some of them didn't even know they had that much money in the bank from the federal government. <laughs> All these wicked people, and they so-called black. Just because they black, you got some black evil ones in office too. America first. I'll be on them. So we're going to talk about it some more. And this is why I'm glad I got my own show where I can ded dedicate 40 some odd minutes to politics. We're going to move on, Eric Adams. I got your back, brother. But if I find out that you lied to me and to the black people, I'm going to be standing in New York City, knocking on doors, saying, we got to vote you out, sir. You're going to be a one-term president, in a uh, one-term mayor in New York. You in that suit and tie. In the mirrors, got to hit the door. I don't, so I'm going to be on your side for right now. But if I find out you lied and you me too, that lady, you out as the mayor. And we're going to be there doing a live show, knocking on doors from Brooklyn to the Bronx to every part of New York City. Get you out of there. And I'm a family candidate that's going to do a good job for New Yorkers. Don't play with me. You better not lie to me. Tell me the truth. Because if you lie, it's gonna be some, it's gonna be a problem. But you got to go. I don't play that. You can't be out there me tooing people and think you're gonna stay in that seat. Nope. We're gonna vote you out. If I have to call everybody in New York to tell them, vote now! Recall him out of there. Not gonna play. Now we're gonna move on. Let's talk about Candace Owens for a second. Hey, Miss Candace. I love her so much because she was tap dancing for the white folks. She was on the Daily Wire, you know, talking about black people. She dragged George Floyd, call him a criminal. She called him out. And I just said, wait a minute. She called out everybody. Breonna Taylor. She just called everybody out that was black. Here a woman is, got up on her platform. She wanted to be international. Got into an international situation. Talked about what was going on in the world. And they fired her. And they called her anti, you already know the rest. When they say anti- that's it. When they labor her that, I say her job is gone. I don't understand. You talk about, I speak truth to power. I believe in freedom of speech. Wait a minute. Freedom of speech is a lie. It is a limit on how much speech and freedom you got unless it's just against black folk. You could be have freedom of speech against your community all day. But there is certain groups that exist in this society that you cannot give all that freedom and all that speech. They will fire you. Just like that. And they can remove you because they installed you into the position. They gave it to you. So they can take it away. 
if you were so iconic and you such a boss, why didn't you build your own Candace wire? Why did it take you, Miss Candace, to get fired? Now you want to ask for donations. You should have built your own platform if you wanted to have freedom. Now you got to beg for money. If you knew you didn't have enough in the bank, stop trying to be like Farrakhan and speak. Shut up. Take what they give you. You can't talk like Farrakhan. You ain't got nobody out there selling no Candace bean pies. You ain't got nobody out there with bow ties knocking on doors selling Final Call Candace Call newspapers. You can't speak like that unless you are willing to lose it all. If you ain't willing to do that, Shut up and stop trying to talk that talk. Damn it. Stop trying to speak truth to power when you know you ain't that powerful and strong. You just mad at being. You mad that they kicking you out of the white. They kicking you out. Now you got to come over here to black folk. Talk black. Yeah, I'm black woman. Didn't have me at I'm so black. I love my black people. You're going on black podcast. One thing about black folks, we're going to welcome you in. Oh, you was going to create. Only thing you got to do, come to a couple of barbecues. Eat a couple of slices of watermelon. Cook you some good old fried chicken. Put on a good old bonnet. Get out there and twerk. Get out there and wobble. Get out there talking ignorant. Embrace with some black rappers. We gonna welcome you back in, Candace. You say you a Christian, you gonna do nothing but go to Bishop T D Jakes. Candace, have you ever been swallowed up? You ain't gonna do nothing but go to the Potter's house. You ain't gonna do nothing but go to wine the party and start shouting. But you set that up. Anytime you go to their space, they can always remove you. You eating at they table, them they lights, them they cameras, and you think you're going to speak about they cousins? They going to kick you out, black woman. They going to remind you that you black. They going to remind you to get back. They going to remind you that you are a slave. Don't you get it twisted just because you sleep white? You're not white. Damn it, they going to kick you to the curb. They only welcome you when you're talking about George Floyd. They only welcome you when you were trashing Breonna Taylor. They only welcome you when you were trashing Lizzo. But damn it, when you try to trash their people, they going to kick your black ass out the door. You ain't going to be welcome. How dare you talk about our people? Get her black behind out of here. You fired. You think you're going to talk about our people? Your job is to be the black face talking about black people. Say the things that we can't say, you say it. But you going to get your lips to talk about our people? You out of here. Do I feel sorry for you? No. Why would you want to wake up? Oh, I'm woke now. Shut up. Stay asleep. You took all the coins and then save it. Now you broke. You dumb. You should have saved up your money. If you want to talk that talk, at least make sure you got five million in the bank. You check the check. No edges having woman. I speak to your shame. Don't come back to the black community yet. You on time out. I don't trust you. Stop trying to speak on something that you know they're going to kick you to the curb. Dummy. You speaking against something. People, many people tried to speak against them, and they destroyed them. From Brother Malcolm, the great Dr. King, 
Minister Farrakhan. The list goes on and on. And if they went through it, what do you think you're going to go with no edges? You ain't got no protection. At least when certain entities do it, they can get and still eat with their community. You abandoned your community. You abandoned your foundation, which is black folks. You turned your back against the black community. You joked and trash. Now you need us and our resources. At least wait till your foundation is solid. You ain't got a solid foundation. You think they your solid foundation? Nope. They only going to let you stand there. You got to speak our agenda. Speak against it, you fired. And you already know why they fired you. And you're going to keep on talking. And you're going to be banned from CNN, Fox News, Breakfast Club, because they own it. ABC, you ain't going back on that. CBS, you won't be seeing that, the B or the S. The N, you won't be seeing the N. You won't be seeing the B, and you won't be seeing the C. Oh, you think you're about to go over there, the B-E-T? You won't be over there either. You will be banned. Certain people was talking so much, they banned them for every television network. You can't go. Some people spoke up so much, you're banned on social media. So if you want to stay in the get down, either A, Shut up, or be speak and be on the outside and begging for a cash app and a PayPal and a snap and a super chat. But you did all that talking. How you want to talk about other people when you trash black folks? Shut up. Have several seats. Take your biracial children, feed them some breakfast, and just shut up. You the one that sat and did all that talking. And you talked around or talked about the wrong people and they fired you. You were just a darling to them white folks. But you pissed off them and they kicked you to the curb. Told you to take your all the bags. They took their wigs. They took their makeup artists. They took their stylists. They took their car service. They took it all. And now you got to beg. Now you beg. Donate to my website. Help me right now. I need your help. You did that. Certain subjects I'm not going to talk about. And let me tell you why. Number one, I'm not that educated to talk about it. Number two, I'm not strong to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that. Number three, I'm not educated in that subject. Number four, I've read history. Number five, I'm not educated in that subject. Some, some battles, I'm not going to try to pick up when I know I'm not trained enough for that. Some situations, you're not trained for that. That ain't your walk. So don't try to walk that walk. You're going to get destroyed. Don't try to do it. Some subjects I ain't going to discuss. I'm not that educated in it. I'm not about to, no, I ain't about to deal with that pushback. No, I know my limit. Cardi B, Nikki, Marlon Wayne's, Oprah, Ozempic. Gail in a box, allegedly. That's it. I'm not going to get like that. Do I watch people that do it? Yes. I'm a spectator and I read the history books. I love Brother Malcolm. But you think I'm going to pick up that baton like Brother Malcolm? You better know what you're doing. I don't want to go through that struggle. Oh, no, sir. Not me. I read about it. Read the book, watch the documentary, eat a slice of a bean pie. That's my lane. I'm not about to try to pick that that baton up. No, sir. Ah, uh -uh. I ain't picking that up. Give me a slice of bean pie. Give me a bow tie. Oshabaha yabashata. 
That's about it. I put a post on the wall. But if you think I'm about to sit here and pick up that, not me. You ain't about to bear me like Candace Owens. <laughs> I ain't about to be watching my back. No, sir. Let it's other folk that's doing it. They got heavy security, bow tie wearing security, bean pie, and newspaper sellers. I ain't got that. Y'all really give a super chat right now when I'm talking about Nikki. You think I'm about to go against these powerful people? For nope. So, Candace, I don't feel sorry for you. And if you say you're so educated, why would you go against the man that feeds you? Why would you go against that? It ain't going to be profitable. All the bookings that you got, you ain't going to get it. And you're going to be replaced by another black conservative woman that's going to play their game. <laughs> she going to be thick. Her edges going to be edging. She going to be a thick chocolate black woman. <laughs> you're going to be replaced. They already looking for your replacement. They're going to know all their talking points and they're going to be up there in the conservative. They're going to be the darling of the conservative media. You're going to be forget, forgot about. Only thing you better do, read your Bible, eat you of some piece of fried chicken, eat a, a slice of lemon pepper, and watermelon and take care of your children. But if you think you're going to be in nice spaces again, nope. You already know you messed up. I don't know what who advised you to do that stupid move. Dummy. I give her a show of my network for she could be ignorant. No, sir. Go on over there with Kanye West. He got bipolar. Go over there. All right. Let me move on. <laughs> I gotta move on. It's a bye 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 shot I do. I got I I gotta move on. That woman did all that for what? For nothing. Are y'all enjoying the show? I told y'all it's gonna be a good show. I told y'all it's gonna be a good show. Make sure y'all thumbs up the <clears throat> the video, share the video, and we love it. Now, Marlon Wayne Wayans, Marlon out there slinging that pain. Got a one year old child. Now they want to get full custody, want child support and all that. He can't control his pain. He thought he was gonna be able to pull out like a white chick. Got a baby. Now he got to pay all that child support. And he going to be crying like Tyrese. That woman probably going to get uh, about $80,000 a month because he could control that sausage. Did all that cheating. Fornicate. Now you got to pay all that money. Now you really going to be out there on the tour. Now you really going to be out there doing White Chicks Part 2. You did it. You should have pulled out. Because I know you're not married. You're single. I believe you're single now. But you're just stupid. Y'all be screwing these people that want a bag. Brittany, your ex, Brittany Moreland. Filing for full custody of their 15-month-old daughter. Marlon, ex Brittany Moreland, has filed for full custody of their 15 month old daughter. And court documents obtained by people, Moreland 34 filed a petition to determine a paternal relationship. With Marlon, 51, 
in the state of California. The actor got two children with the ex, Angela, with whom he was in a relationship with from 1992 to 2013. Got a daughter. And according to the filing, Moreland is seeking full legal and physical custody. But it's actually that the actor received visitation rights. On Thursday, Marlon spoke with the Shade Room responding to Moreland's legal filings. This is a quote. All love, all God. The baby isn't a secret. <clears throat> the mama has been posted, but I choose to keep the baby private life private, he said. Quote, ain't nobody's business. Social media is toxic and dangerous. And I like to keep her peace. However, the actor said he didn't like being named as a visitor to his daughter. Quote, do you pay all the money per month and be called a visitor? Do the math. This is delusional. I will let the lawyers of God do what they do. Marlon told the outlet, quote, I will be creating our form a broken heart. I got nothing but love. Even when it's bad, it's good. It's God. More land is also petitioning for reasonable expenses of pregnancy and birth, as well as fees and costs of litigation to be covered by Marlon. In addition to the paternity documents, More land, who is listed as an unemployed graduate student in California, submitted an income and expense. Expense declaration. She states that part of her monthly expenses go toward providing clothes for the minor child. According to documentation filed by the 34-year-old, she spends about 95% of their time, the baby spends 95% of the time with me, 5% of the time with the other parent. Marlon is requesting $2,000 per month <coughs> for Marlon for child care. So she can continue working. Marlon also addressed Marlon's child support request in a paternity suit in a conversation with the Shade Room. Quote, it's the classic case of good, loving, responsible father shelling out over $18,000 per month for a one-year-old and an entitled woman decides she wants more. Marlon said, my mama and them would have lost their mind for two thousand dollars but baby brother marlon you you fornicator this ain't your mama in the projects you rich that piece of sausage that you put in that unemployed graduate student in california she gonna use that one two-year-old child to cash in on your check how stupid can you be? There's plenty of women that you can insert yourself. But Brother Marlon, why didn't you pull out? You too busy pulled in and you deposit your seed. And due to the laws of this country, especially in California, she is trying to become the full parent so she can get more than the $20,000. But you the one with the bag. You the one with the wealth. You should have used your common sense instead of listening to that small head that's about a good seven inches cut and you should have been losing to the mind that God gave you in your head on top of the crown of your head instead of listening to your sausage head. You listen to your sausage head having no two minutes of pleasure. Now you got to deal with 18 years or more of a check. Now you got to deal with that. Instead of you pulling out, you pulled in. Uh, 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 y'all about shot that eye. When, 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 when. Now she going to get the check, 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 check. Don't bring your mama in this. Your mama was poor. 
This is a different era. You got money. She don't care nothing about the child. She's an unemployed graduate student. But she graduated because she got that baby and her baby daddy. This man, Marlon, is rich. How much is your net worth, Marlon? Do y'all mind me talking about him? Your net worth, I'm just asking, how much is your net worth, sir? I know it's in the millions. $40 million. $40 million. You did two minutes of pleasure, and then you think these women want you, Marlon? No. They want the bag, the check. And she, she's a trained woman, how to get that bag, how to make you feel like a real man, and she made sure that thing was warm, goody, 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 and tight. You came in two minutes. She got a child. Now you got the pay. Now you're going to be out here crying, begging. We don't care. You did all that. Dummy. What you doing an interview for the shade rule for? Like, we're going to get you some sympathy. The, the shade is, you was weak. You should have pulled out. Only weak men stay in there with money. If you was like Pookie and Ray, I understand. She could have went to the government and got a check. But you know her government cheese going to come from your bank account. You did that. Dummy. Stupid. The women don't care nothing about you. They want your money. You know your mama taught you better than that. But you want to be a whore. Now you got to pay. You are the other parent. You're nothing to her but a bag. You can't raise them. You true true is it traveling, doing movies, doing specials. There ain't nobody watching. You don't know how to pull out. You did all that talking, all that laughing, all that sweating. Can't even do no interview. You got to sweat. You, you know when you're sweating, you know when that sweat about to drip down, and you know how to wipe that sweat. But you know you about to reach that mold of government insider. Why didn't you pull it out? If most men knew how to pull out, they wouldn't be in the mess. Now you in that mess. Now you with Tyrese in the courtroom fighting for your money. You weak. You in Tyrese, that crying man, crying chocolate man. Oh, damn. what child needs that much money? A child that got a rich father like you, stupid, beta, weak. Y'all don't know how y'all go after the gold diggers. And don't want to wear no protection. Now you got to deal with the consequences of writing that check. Don't be doing all that crying. I don't want to hear. Shut up. You rich. Pay up. Anyway, God is good. I had to talk about because I'm like, you doing an interview for what? If you don't want to marry her and be with her, you decided for that two minute of pleasure. At least put protection on so you don't have this 20 year commitment, 18 year at minimum. That's you. 
Let's talk about Karen drunk. This Karen from the Real Housewives, Huga, she can't control her liquor. That heifer couldn't control her liquor. She was driving like, you know, Tiffany Haddish and got a DUI. Karen, Karen Huga. This is on all about the TR Fred. This is a headline. Karen Huga. In a high speed crash after a DUI arrest. Was alcohol involved? Again, question. Real Housewives of Potomac. Karen Huga was involved in a high speed crash, resulting in the total loss of her luxurious. 2007 Maserati, according to the recent report. <laughs> Authorities from Montgomery County Police Department and Maryland disclosed to TMZ that the incident occurred late Tuesday night, Karen, age 60, you old and a drunk. You see, your citizen was purportedly drinking in an aggressive manner. Old drunk. Drinking. When the incident transpired, police detailed that Karen's vehicle collided with a median in a crosswork sign at an intersection before ultimately crashing into a parking sign off the roadway. Old drunk and can't see. Reportedly, her car came to a halt upon the final impact while police did not provide specific details regarding the bravo speed at the time of the incident the spokesperson indicated that she had been traveling too fast for the conditions the impact of the crash was substantial enough to trigger the deployment of the airbag in Karen's luxury vehicle. However, it remains unclear whether she sustained any injuries as a result. Notably, there were no passengers present in the car at the time of the incident as reported by the outlet. The Maserati was reportedly severely damaged to the extent that it was rendered undrivable. The dispatch of a tow truck to remove it from the scene. A tow truck had to come tow it. The Maserati. While Karen was not subject to arrest, TMZ reported she received multiple unspecified citations in the connection with the incident. In 2016, Karen confronted her past by addressing a DUI charged from a decade earlier during an interview. She disclosed the incident occurred while she was on her way home. Karen admitted guilt. Subsequently received a sentence of probation. Karen recalled the incident explaining that she was arrested for drunk driving after enjoying a celebratory dinner and heading back to her home in Portamount, Maryland. Quo, 
quote, I pulled over the mother of two exclusively revealed to Bassa. Technically, I wasn't driving. I was pulled over into a park area where you should not park. I turned off the car and I called my heaven. However, the police officer found me first and I was charged with a DUI. Following the arrest, the reality TV star pleaded guilty to driving while impaired by alcohol and was subsequently placed on probation. Despite the setback, Karen, known for her adherence to eloquence and proper manners, refuses to let the incident define her. She views the experience as uh, uh, a, 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 a cash dated for personal growth. Quote, I said over, oh, wait. Quote, I said when I took on this project, I own everything about me that makes me, me. She remarked, quote, what makes me this woman people can look at. You have ups and downs, curves, the things in life. You still stand. I'm still standing. Yeah, you standing drunk. You drunk. Karen, you too old and got too much plastic surgery and Botox to be drinking. It is dangerous to be behind the wheel drinking impaired and driving. It reminded me of this black brother in Chicago. The city of Chicago got to spend millions to settle because a black teenager was injured from a car accident by the cops. And they supposedly were not drinking. Can you imagine you is an untrained driver and you like to drink and have celebratory events and you can't control your liquor, you drunk old drunk lady? How dare you get behind your wheel with that luxury vehicle that you still owe payments for and drink that cheap liquor and you ran it into something? What if you would have ran into me? What if you would have ran into an innocent bystander, a mother with children, a nurse, a food, a chef, a homeless person? You need to be in jail. Need to be in a sober house. Did you look at Wendy Williams' documentary? Having that alcoholic-induced dementia? You 60. Still trying to drink. You ain't in your 20s no more. You a foolish woman. And where's your weak husband? Where he at? How would you, as the husband, the head of the house, allow this woman with that blonde wig to be drinking a Colt 45, Old English, cheap Hennessy, great goose? Why didn't you stop her in the driveway and say, baby, you too drunk to be driving? And I got to say this. You supposed to be rich. Where's your driver? How you supposed to be worth all these millions and you ain't got no drama? When I was out in Dallas for a Nate 702 birthday celebration, we was at the bar in Plano, Texas, and we had multiple bottles, and I was drinking with multiple shots. I had common sense to know I need a sober driver, and my producer, while she was single, she decided to be the sober driver, and she drove me home, and she walked me to the car, and she made sure I pulled up to my apartment in my one room with the popcorn ceiling. She made sure Brother Wiley got home safe. I wasn't no fool. To be behind the wheel truck, I wouldn't have made it. And it reminded me of Nate 702. He was heavily under the influence. That brother was so drunk. He slept in the garage 
the parking garage. He slept it off. And that's when he was able, the next day, hours in the next day, he was able to drive back to his house. But he had common sense. He wasn't no dummy like Karen. And that man is 30 years younger than Karen. He knew I'm too drunk to be driving, so I'm just going to sleep in this parking garage in my vehicle. And that brother is in his 30s. Here is Karen, old enough to be Brother Wiley, great-grandmother, decided to drive drunk. You ain't responsible. You too old to be that irresponsible. I understand a little bit if you was 26. You 60. Set your old tail down. Learn how to be sober-minded. If you're going to be a drunk, be a drunk in your house. Be a drunk being the passenger of an Uber, a Lyft, on the city bus. But don't be no damn wicked, foolish woman driving drunk behind the wheel. Talk back to me in this chat. You could have put your life at risk and many innocent lives at risk in Maryland. You too old to be doing this. What you're going through a midlife crisis? You made it over being a half century old. Thank God you're about to hit into your 70s. You ain't young no more. Stop trying to look like it. Stop trying to act like it. You 60. You've been here for six decades. Thank God you're still here. Stop trying to keep up with the young folks. You in your 60s now. Sit down with your foolish self. I speak to your shame. Thank you, Mouth Over, for that $5 super chat. You 60. When you get 60, act like you got some common sense. You don't even need to act like you got, you should have it already. You got gray hair. 60. Where your husband, brother, been? Get your wife in check, weak man. Beta. I'm tired of you weak men got y'all wives acting crazy. The reason why they acting crazy is because they got weak men. Go on somewhere, eat some jello. Go on out there to a nursing home and do karaoke. Go on out there and be with the dementia patients paying bingo. Go read a book. Go, go net a sweater. You should be at no bar drinking at 60 and pissy drunk. You too old to be that pissy and drunk and paid. Running to trees and sand. Need to be at home cooking for your husband. A pot roast. Butter dinner rolls from scratch. Cornbread from scratch. Shouldn't be out there driving drunk. What you drinking for? Get you some therapy. Thank you to Monica from All About the Tea for putting that article out. I love her so much. I love her so much. Because she wrote a beautiful, her team wrote a beautiful article. I'm preaching. Thank you, Lala. Thank you so much, Lala. I felt that right now. Karen, you too old to be doing all that drink. Oh, Wiley. I feel like you you too hard on fault. Shut up!
I could be hard on anybody I want to be hard on for. You don't need to be doing all that drinking. I don't drink like that. And if I do, I'm at home. I'm taking an Uber. I'm on the bus. And Shabbat Shabbat Shabbat. I'm on the bus. Ah, I will drink a little shot, but you ain't gonna see me drive it. You ain't gonna be seeing me out there driving drunk. First of all, I don't want my insurance to go up. Just like Bilal Grogram, oh, I'm talking about it. Here she is, a young, foolish woman. It was out there storming in Houston. Ice storm. She decided to go out there with Crocs and booty shorts. Eating, smoking, weed. She drove and slid off the road, caused a five-car head-on collision. And she went live. Malagro Grams. Went live. And she was smelling like Kush and Lyle. And the tow driver said, oh, man, you smell like weed. Oh, yes, you can still smell it. So she had to go on her purse and get some perfume, but you still was able to smell it. All that heavy weed. You so you supposed to be a mother. She didn't have no husband, no boyfriend. She just out there by herself. And she do all that kissing Nikki behind. Why could Nikki get her? You a car service, a driver. You supposed to be so rich and you want to smoke in a snowstorm. Go to a drug rehab. You addict. And got the audacity to cuss me out and you couldn't even drive on ice because you was impaired with marijuana. Don't oh, make no sense. Did all that getting high. Driving off the road. Hit that innocent white woman. That white woman was mad at her business. Listening to Frank Sinatra. She got her a nice cup of coffee. And here you are. Dragging. In pair, and she slid off the road. And here we are, we got to deal with that because of your foolishness. Yes, I'm talking about you. You had no business out in Texas, high under the influence. Nice look, Karen, but she supposed to be a public figure, can't control her liquor. Her, Karen, Huga, and Milagro both need to be off the road. They can't, one can't control her weed, drug habit, the one can't control her liquor. Get them off the road. Put them in rehab. Get them off the road.
driving drunk. Driving. Putting your life at risk. So I'm talking today. I know y'all ain't ain't ready for this, but I got to do it. Isha ba 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 da da. Andy, get her off the air. Put me on there. <clears throat> it's time for y'all to put a real man with a wig on anyway. Younger. Put Miss Netta on there then. At least she's sober. She got bumps on her face, but she's sober. Her face is bumpy, but I never seen Miss Netta out there sloppy jump. Slidding off the road. She got a bumpy face. But she ain't slidding off the road. That's what I'm saying. Don't play with me. I got to say it. The show have started, Kimberly. You're late. Just sit back and enjoy the show. And don't try to rush me. Because you ain't donate since 1954. You hear me, Kimberly? I hope you ain't drunk. You better not be driving. Because with that type of name, you in your 60s. You already know, Kimberly. You got you a masecto. I know you got one. You're drinking right now. Ain't nothing wrong with drinking. I like to drink a little bit, but I got to impress somebody when I'm trying to drink. You know, Lala, if you look good, I'll get up at the bar. Let me get two. What you like, baby? You know, I like I like Grey Goose shots. Oh, let me get two Grey Goose shots. I'm trying to impress you. Get a little drink. Get up. I was I, IEP. Yeah, I did have an IEP. But I know with having an IEP that you shouldn't D-R-U-N-K and D-R-I-V-I-N-G. Just because I got an IEP don't mean that I don't mean that I ain't got no common sense. That's government. That IEP ain't nothing for just getting a check for the school. My life. It's greatness. My life is awesomeness. My life is wealth. Here you are talking about IEP, but yet you watching W-I-L-E-Y. You don't love me. Send me a cash out and let me feel your love talking. And to then, keep your comments to yourself. When you get called out, now I love you. Shut up. Let me fill that love in a good old nasty cash out. Paper. A nice sale. Make me smile when I head to the bar. Put an Uber in the lift. Thank you, Miss Terry. Now, we're going to move on from Karen. We got to talk about the Princess of Wales really quick. The lady got the cancer. They said, bye, 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 shut up. And when I was watching CNN, <laughs> they said what she said ain't making no sense. 
because she ain't got no cancer. That woman suck allegedly from depression. She don't want to be in that 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 thing. She she her husband cheating on it allegedly. So the best thing to do before they announce divorcement, let's just say you got cancer. If it you white, I got a little cancer. I don't want my children. Then she was talking about how she got it, what happened, the surgery, get, and then a doctor on CNN said this don't make no sense what she talking about. Ain't they what she going through? Her husband cheating. Her hair falling out. She don't want to be the princess of Wales. She want to be free. But the only thing to keep it on cold, now she got to have a little cancer. She ain't got no cancer. She just got, she, she got a C all right, a cheating husband. Prince William cheating, stressing her out. She stressed. And then she got her out there lying. She want to be free. She don't want to be bound to the palace no more. Only C she got is a cheating husband. She got the CH, cheating husband. Her husband can't keep that royal peen under subjection. And I love Kate Middleton. I love the royal family like they're my own family. But I know it's in the DNA from the King Charles to the Prince William. They ain't going to be faithful. They got to cheat. You know this. I know this. They're not going to be faithful. There's not too many powerful, wealthy men that is faithful to their wife. You got plenty broke men that can't stay faithful. Now you're going to get a man with power and resources? Talk back to me in this chat. It ain't too many poor men that stay faithful. Now you a man with power? No, you ain't going to be just tapping that. You're going to tap something else. Wealthy man get tired with one woman quick. Poor man get tired with one woman quick. These are just facts. Whether you agree with Brother Wiley or disagree, it ain't too many faithful men out here. There's only a few of them. And if you got peace of the few, keep your mouth closed. Don't tell nobody. Thank the Lord and keep the rest to yourself. There ain't too many faithful men that... <laughs> Baby, you even got the man part with the faithful. Let's move on. I feel for her. But I've seen this story play out over and over again. Just read the history of the royal family. You ain't going to be shocked. She ain't going to be the first deal with a cheating husband. Neither is she going to do the deal with a cheating husband. Uh, she, she's just, a, 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 uh, just another story, just a different cast. It's the same script. Just different cast. That's it. Talk back to me in the chat. I see y'all in here. Where you at? Uh, who by Shaddai? Are we talking today? Did y'all hear in the cash out in the Zell? Come on. We're going to move on. I love the royal family. But one thing I will not support is someone cheating on my favorite 
were your family. I don't agree with that. I really don't. We shouldn't be cheating. We should show love and dedication. That's why it's best to be single, but they're in a royal family. He, he have to be married. I believe it is, but I do more research. <clears throat> now we got to talk about Larry Reed. It's about how y'all. Larry. Beto. Keep your children away from Larry. He's a Beto. All right. So Larry Reed. Minty. Larry decided to make up with William McCray. He decided to make up with Brother William McCray. They do an Instagram live. During the Instagram live, this is what William McCray said. And see what you don't understand. You friends with that brother over there, though. See, Toy Boy, you're friends with him. You know, CTV got the HIV. He got the HIV. And see, he be talking about me, and he got the diagnosis of the HIV with Larry on, 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 on the broadcast. So I go, I said, people sent it to me. So then CTV went live. The man was crying. <gasps> I don't understand all the stuff and all the hurt. The internet is just so much for me and what I have to battle and to go through. It's just so much. And I just can't handle This man had on music playing, sad music playing in the back. And when Mount TV sent me CTV, crying announcement when he was exposed out for having the three letters. I immediately laughed. You know why I laughed? Because CTV Larry Reed Minty made fun of my mental health. He laughed. He key key. And here you go. Supposedly according to William McCray got the H. And now you cry. Now you want some sympathy. Now you can't handle being on the internet. But yet you were talking about my mental health. But you can't handle having the H, the I, and the V. Now you want to cry. Shut up. Stop all that crying. Take your medication. You should have kept your legs closed for them sick men. Dummy, take it. Live with the consequences. Take your medicine. I'm not giving you no sympathy because you didn't even tell me of your diagnosis when I was supposed to be your baby daddy. You say do it with no condom. You could have infected me, you devil. Why would I give you sympathy when you allow yourself to be connected to Larry Reed according to his Trinidadian lover that he got H, the P, and the V. You got the I, the H, and the V. A lot of sickness going on over there. But yet you want me to give you some sympathy. Nope. Only thing you're going to get from me is a quarantine, a mask, and send you a, I guess, a doctor note. Tell the doctor to go see you. Get you some Medicaid. Get you some Social Security disability. Go get you a free apartment. You can get some resources now. You sick. I ain't giving you no sympathy. So what? Leave the internet. We ain't going to miss you. Neither that week. You sat here and you defended Larry and Larry brought somebody on his live and that man exposed your health. Blame your mentor. Blame him. Blame that man. He sat there and let William McCray say it on the air. But you can't say nothing towards him. He bought you a house. I mean, he paid the rent for your trailer park. He paid for that car. Tell him to buy your meds. Tell him to go to the Dr. Sabi followers to get it out your body. He going there, but it ain't working. He been losing weight ever since he opened his mouth. So 
We would have never known that, having been for Larry, being messy with William McCray, because he wanted to have William McCray as an a a ally. But brother William, you already exposed the allegation of Larry Reed. We got you on tape. That's the wrong type of ally. William McCray is blackball off the industry. Ain't nobody, he ain't got no power in the church industry no more. Y'all took him out. Conscious, you took him out. And that brother found out about them three letters, he exposed you. And then you had the audacity to sit on Instagram with 50 people crying. You think you're going to get some sympathy from me? Nope. Only thing you're going to get from me is a warning label, stay away from them, quarantine. Don't do it until you take antibiotics. Get on prep because he ain't going to be able to get on prep. You better protect yourself. Don't do it. Put on five rubbers. Get on five type of preps. You were the power bottom. What do you expect? You should never let nobody deposit that sausage inside your cheeks. This would have never got exposed if you'd have stopped trying to be Larry Reed media press secretary. And now you in a scandal. But Larry did it with his messy behind. Brought William on the show. And what you don't understand, that CTV got the HIV. He said it slowly with them big, thick nails in that church hat. So why are you mad at brother? Why are you crying? Baby, you need to rebuke your mentor, but you can't. He bought you. Only thing you got, infected blood, embarrassment. Now you don't want to be on the internet. Get you some help. Now you need to be on some cuckoo mints. You did all that talking about me. tears. What you, what you, you, you think, you really think, you really think I'm going to give you some sympathy after you got there and you sat there with Sherelle World and that wig laughing at me? You sat there with Sherelle World, the one that's jealous of Monica. You sat right there with that woman and you laughed and now you sick and crying. I'm not giving you no sympathy until you get on your knees and apologize for what you said to me. To the end, it's ha 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 in your face. Shouldn't be that embarrassed. You're going to get free services, free Wi-Fi, free food disability, and a free apartment. You're going to get everything. You got the package. Gone to New York with Rico. He got a new apartment. Furnish, furnish, food, stipend. You just got to have that package. Paid by the taxpayers. You still getting a check from Larry? You sat there. Cry for what? Shut up. And Larry didn't even defend you. He messy. I tried to tell you, you witch. 
Now go on and put a spell and try to get that dirty blood out of you. Go do the spell. Abracadabra. Get the H. Get the V. Achabashata. Go get you a doll. Put a little doll. Put something in its spaghetti. Put a pink portion. I don't know what you got to do. But you say you're a witch. Yes, Abahaya. Habakadabra. Go do some Harry Potter. Get you a wand. I don't know. But yet you got to deal with a scandal. You ain't going to do nothing but go lie with Larry Reed. He going to go under there. See what? I understand. See, 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 this is what they don't know. I didn't even know he was going to say that. Shut up. Get that man some antibiotics. Get him a IV fluids. Now he need to get a, a check over there. Somebody got to go check on him. He crying. Weak. I thought you were strong. Sit down. Shut up. Repent. You join over there with them spirits. Now you, now you getting exposed. Now you, you want my sympathy. I ain't giving it to you. Nope. Ain't going to you. You did that. So now you got to deal with the consequences. I just don't understand about the internet and this so much. Shut up. You have drag. You have said you're going to put spells on people. Child. Now go on and get your real world. Let her and Perry. They ain't going to do nothing but drag you. Get them up there to defend you. Tell Sherelle's world to put on that wig to bring you to Vegas to help heal you. Give you some of that good old soup. Tell Perry at 7-Eleven to give you some of them Polishes. He work at 7-Eleven. He can give you a good Polish at 7-Eleven. Tell him to take a couple of sandwiches to bring you a meal from 7-Eleven. Tell them to use some of that 7-Eleven Medicaid insurance plan. Might as well use Sherelle insurance. She ain't using it for that wig. Take her insurance. Let's move on. Yeah, that was shot out. You did all that talking about Tasha K. Look at Tasha K. She's smiling. You did all that talking about that woman. And look at her just smiling at you with her finger waves with green hair. Finger waves. Smiling. You can't say nothing to her now. She ain't going to do nothing but talk about you and her comedy set. Y'all don't understand. Jeez, gay man with that blood. Let's move on. I've been putting a lot of work. And all these people did was just drag me. Yet they crying because I be crying. But yet they crying because now they dealing with a scandal. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. No, it was the blood for me. Oh man! Yes, Baba. Oh the Baba Baba. He need a healing. You better put some prayer in it. Let's move on. Nicki Minaj, Nicki Minaj. So we got to talk about Nicki Minaj, and this was on TMZ. TMZ wrote in the headline, and this is what TMZ said. 
Nicki Minaj and Kenneth Petto, I mean Kenneth Petty, on the hook for five hundred thousand dollars over the security guard suit. Nicki Minaj and Kenneth Petty were accused of ambushing a security guard with violence a couple of years back, and it appears they ignored ignored the, his lawsuit because they now owed money. The rapper and her husband had default judgment enter against them on Friday, at L.A. County Superior Court. After this, after the judge said they failed to respond to the lawsuit. As a result, Nikki and Kenneth now have to pay up an amount of $503.318. Uh, we broke the story. Nikki and Kenneth were sued by a guy named Thomas, um, who alleged Petty and Minaj roughed him up in 2019 at a concert she did in Germany. At the time, uh, 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 Thomas claimed that Nikki had ber berated one of his security guards working under him, and he said he went to address it. At which point he alleged she threw a shoe at him. He said he dodged it. However, the guy alleged Kenneth was waiting in the wings. And they said Thomas claimed Kenneth uh, socked him in the face and broke his jaw and alleged he had eight different surgeries to fix the damage. He sued in 2022 for the hefty uh, medical bills. We reached out to Nikki Cap. So far, no word back. It's really sad because... Nicki Minaj's career is just not the same. Her husband is, is a pedo and violent. And she's in debt with the tour. So she has to pay every money she makes. She's paying back the previous debt. She's not going to walk away with a massive profit. She didn't respond to the, the, the lawsuit because she can't afford a lawyer. She's under a lot of pressure because she decided to marry a thug. Instead of marrying a corporate guy, she married a pedo guy. And yes, she got to deal with the consequences. Because she wanted some type of street cred. She wanted to keep up with the Lil' Kim image by dating a pedo. At least Lil' Kim only dated real thugs. None of them that I know were pedos. It's really sad and it's disgusting that Nicki Minaj decided to have this entire brand. And her husband came in and destroyed everything that she had built. Now she's going down. Married to a pedo in legal debt. Liens upon liens. It's crazy. She can't even she can't even enjoy the success of the tour because she really didn't want to do it, but it's to pay a debt. And I don't think she have been on top in a very long time. Only time she's on top is with her husband in the bedroom. And in her mind, she hoped that he stopped his pedal behavior. So that's why she keep him around everywhere he, she go. And it's so disgusting to have a sold out tour, but it got to pay for your other failed tour that you abandoned and you got to owe all that debt. That's the gag. And it's so sad. And I'm saying it from the heart. That's the disgusting part. That's the disgusting part. Nicki Minaj, get your life together. You are evil because you could have picked. So many men that could have treated you with dignity and uplift your brand. But you decided to date a thug that can't keep his area away from little girls. And that's who you marry. You are despicable. And it's wrong for what you did. And it's sad. And I'm calling you out, sister, to call you up. Thank you all so very much. Uh, we're going to open up the phone lines because I want to hear your thoughts. If you want to defend the former queen of hip-hop, Nicki Minaj, the former queen of hip-hop, Nicki, former queen, she's not the current queen, former queen of hip-hop, because Cardi B don't have those issues, so I will give the title back to Cardi B at this time. It is 3.23, okay? We're going to um, give the title back to Cardi B at this time i file a motion and as of right now i control it i own the panel so i would usher it on this particular day i would install cardi b as the new queen of hip-hop i am giving her the title back on march the 23rd 2014 she is now we are now giving um the um, the title to cardi b all right. Anybody want to call in? Now is the time. I know it's late, 
But I told you I was going to come and give y'all a show and I gave y'all a show. And we've been gone for two days. And I said, listen, I'm going to give y'all a show for an hour of a day that we missed. So we gave y'all two hours. You know what I'm saying? Can't speak proper English. I gave her the title. And if you don't agree with it, you can properly exit. Because I gave her the title. I gave it to her. So you should be mad talking about she don't speak proper English. She speak great enough English. Her husband, Nikki, speak great English. But what did he do to it? He snatched your innocence from Jennifer Hill. He can't be around children. And that is evil because he should have touched an adult with consent. Why did he touch a child? That's evil. There's so many people he could have been with. Why did he deal with a child? It's about shut up, I shut up. That's what I'm saying. Hey, you live on the Wallet Show. How you doing? I did, can you, no. oh, okay, you move me in the back. How you doing, sister? Welcome to the Wiley Show. I'm doing good. A uh, nice show, although when you talking in tongues, all that chopper, wobble, wobble. I don't know. We can keep that to a minimum. How do you? you how, wait, wait, wait. You can't tell me to keep nothing to a minimum, okay? If I would have told you to stop having them wigs in your hair, keep that to a minimum, non-existent. If I would have told you to stop having children out of wedlock and, and keep a man in or at a minimum, but you, you all still do that. <laughs> I would it, never, it, I like... would never, I would never, I shall buy my candida. will never stop speaking in tongue. It is my tongue. I can't tell you to do with your tongue. So don't think of it as constructive criticism. Don't like, try you know, to give me to your McDonald's. constructive criticism because I did not ask for it. My talk is not up to your criticism. When, Sorry, when you any as I'm putting my tongue on you, it's hot shallow. I never cut it out. It's my tongue. Every company has a mouth. survey and they always ask for don't feedback. Tell so that's I just did the never ask you to talk about my talk, ma'am. You're out of order. And why do you think all black women wear weaves? Is that because you wanted the black woman? Weaves? You sound like you got on a wig now. Is that your real hair? It is. Okay, and can you come over? You need to see that real hair. You got on makeup? Uh, absolutely not. Okay, do you wear makeup? No. Okay, that's a lie. You ain't got a lie. It's called natural beauty. You ain't got but, a lie. And, and, anyway. Who you want to uh, talk about? Because you were talking about my tongue. So let's talk about the celebrities. <laughs> so what's so what's so gripe with uh Nicki Minaj? My gripe with her is like you. Y'all don't know how to mind your business. Y'all get all these evil men, these thugs. You don't get true kings, y'all get criminals. <sighs> That's my point. Okay. But do you think people can uh, have redeeming qualities? Like no. If they do something bad, no. they can redeem themselves no. in life? No. Do you have redeeming qualities? Not, well, if you touch Jennifer Hill, a teenager, ask her, do she forgive? But, but you know ask her. Uh, when you have to Jennifer Hill have don't to forgive Jennifer Petty for what he did to her. Okay, but let me just. Let me just say this. Most of the time when people have to register, it's only for 30 years. So after the 30 years elapsed, then you no longer As if have in to the 30 years, the... he just got in violation a couple of years ago for not registering. So I, so the government and the law think that people have redeeming qualities after 30 years. So Is he off of it, ma'am? We have to give people... I'm you asking know, you a how, question. How... If he, is he off the registry list? Yes or no? We have to give people grace. I'm asking mercy, you a like, question. I ain't stunned your grace. Lord. Your grace is foolish. I'm asking you, is he off the registry list? Yes or uh, no? I'm not sure. I, I don't. 
I don't keep up with celebrities like that. Oh, you don't I keep up with celebrities, but you know how many decades you got to be on the registry list, ma'am? That's a law. That's a law, sweetheart. I understand anyway, that, but I'm have. asking you, is Nicki Minaj's husband still on that registry list law? You would have to ask him. He but, is still on uh, there. You don't want to answer the question because it's still on there. I, no, my only point in bringing that up is that if the law say after 30 years, you probably redeemed yourself, then it's like, who are you to, you know? Ma'am, anyway, I don't wrong. believe, ma'am, you, what you're telling me, this man violated a little girl and you're trying to give him a pass because she's married to Nikki. No, no, no. That's crazy. The only thing that I'm... The only thing that I'm bringing up is that if the law in the country that we live in, if the law say after 30 years, you no longer have to register. All I'm saying is who are, who, who is society in the community to say, no, you haven't redeemed yourself after 30 years. If the law say you no longer have to register, that's all I'm saying. But anyway, we can move on. I, I don't want to move on. I speak to your shame, ma'am. Yeah, even if the law say move on, do you think a victim like Jennifer is going to move on when she was violated? Well, but you have to think about she did have a lawsuit, but then like she didn't appear, she didn't go to court or she didn't continue the law. I'm asking so. you a question with the law. I understand that. But my thing is, do you think that she's going to walk away from that for being violated? Well, some people say, you know, it hasn't. I don't, I don't want to. I'm asking you a question a about a woman that was violated when she was a little girl. Do you think that she's over it? Yes or no, ma'am? Oh, uh, all I'm saying. Do you think it's still bothering her? Huh? Do you think she still has nightmares about being violated by a man? Okay, but I'm just. Yes or no, ma'am? You a woman. I think Nikki said it wasn't true. I, so why are you just, listening to Nikki when he was convicted just, of the crime? I'm just regurgitating. Why are you regurgitating Nikki? The celebrity. I wasn't the there. Victim. He I wasn't was accused. There. He was guilty. He was convicted. He went to prison. Then he tried to act like he didn't want to register. Ma'am, I speak to your shame. I, I do think Nikki could have done better because he did unalive someone. And you know, she's supposed to be this that, and the third. She she could have done better, but maybe it talks to the 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 insecurity that she has, maybe from her childhood or whatever. So so yeah, she could have made a better selection in her mate. But because I'm not in her lifestyle, I don't have, you know, her experiences, I don't wanna be judging her from the outside looking in. So let's move on to Tasha K. What do you think you have to do to uh, get on um wine is a new tea? Oh, I am so glad you asked me that question. I get the question asking me every day. I will have to be loyal and don't challenge the queen and dilute, and maybe my, talk and, about her and, son. And, and dilute my personality. Maybe if you stop talking about her son, maybe that'd be a start. I, I, I will not stop talking about what I want to talk about. I don't care if I get on the wine new tea or not. That's not my end all. But you don't no. think talking about people's kids is going below the bill? What, what about, about what she said about Blue Ivy? That's somebody's child. What if she start talking about her nieces? I don't give a damn what she said about my that nieces. Weed. It's not what she called them. It's what I answer to. The ones that were I don't care weed. what she say. I'm not that emotionally disturbed to be responding with a woman and what she got to say. Who cares? Them just words. But <laughs> if you want to talk about it, she talked about Blue Ivy. What you got to say about that? That's somebody's daughter and she's a, a celebrity. Did, did she apologize for that? I don't give a damn if she apologized. She talked about Blue Ivy, and it was, the apology was sarcasm. Come on, woman. Well, speaking you about you holding me up to a standard, up. you don't hold these other black women up too. You are a hypocrite. Well, since, we, since we're talking about Blue Ivy, no, no, I really no, like no. Since mention. we're talking about it, you say I talk about her son, and I stand on it, just like she called Blue Ivy a, a robot. I just call her son a child soldier. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, because he's not in the, in the limelight. He didn't Who ask, cares if know. he's not in the limelight? His mama is a 
a celebrity, so is Blue Ivy is celebrity about. So again, you holding me up to a different standard, ma'am, that you don't hold everybody else up. Keep quiet because you're not what willing you to call out other people. So don't try to call out me. As I'm really looking up, trying to be on Why the New T, if I get on it, Yes. If I don't, it's still yes. Because guess what? I could do my own show. I can, I can say beer is the new tea. Tea is the new Hennessy. I can do my own show. I ain't got a bed to work with somebody else. I got my own goddamn mic. Okay, but but certain topics should be um, off limits. But anyway, what do you think That's about your Geneva, opinion? Uh, All uh, topics is on the line, and I will be talking about it. There is no limit of what I will say on this show. Are you telling Tasha K her limit? You should have told her not to talk about Cardi B, saying she got bumps. And she wouldn't have to deal with no $4 million lawsuit. And that sunset that she say she love, she wouldn't have to ship it to the Mali or to the Congo. He will still be an American and not have to grow up to be a child soldier in the jungle. But in life, you learn, and, and, and you can see that she, she did learn. Her, she did she learn, but she still didn't pay ways. the money back, ma'am. Okay. I'm trying to hold on to a different standard than me. If you don't see the wrong of what Tasha K doing, you just as evil as her. What do you think about Funky Dineva show? Because I feel like your quality is better where every time you go to a different topic, you have the picture in the background. And I'm like, um, you know, why he hadn't got the memo since he's supposed to be some OG YouTube or somebody experienced. You can't have the memo when you on that booger sugar. Well, who going who gonna to tell him? Who gonna I ain't going to tell him he older than me. He's been living in this world for four decades. If he don't learn about the book of sugar, don't should be on it and spit it on the equipment and not up your nose. Ain't nothing that I can tell him. He don't even have a green screen. Well, he have a green screen. It's green up his screen. nose in his veins. And he don't have time stamps. He don't put the topics in the thumbnail. Baby, you got to talk to fucking that diva. I'm not his HR. I'm not his producer. Only thing I am is a brother telling them to go to rehab. Put down the pipe. Put down the white powder. Go on the fast like Armand and get off that powder. And what do you have against Sherelle's world just because she wear wigs? I have a lot against her. Her wigs, her being a struggling wife, she dry. Her husband is weak. She's a liar and she's jealous of the success of Monica and she ain't got the much money as Monica and her doors is old and need to have some oil just like her yoni and it squeaks just like her yoni. Squeak, dust, poof, dust. Not working. But where is Monica? Is Monica even on YouTube? Monica has have a successful website, allaboutthetea.com, where she's been featured on Mar Bravo multiple times. She was featured on the Windy Winds before the dementia. She Where's was featured on the Breakfast channel? Club. She was featured on the news. She's go viral. She have millions of readers every single day. She is doing successful. Got more money than Sherelle's world in that wig. And she have a strong brand, which Sherelle world can only think about having. So I answer your question, man. I'm going to go to the next caller and i thank you for all of your success and you know what you're gonna do i yes i did have somebody else to call in ma'am i thank you so very much because you did give us 11 minutes of your time i do want to say right. thank you and your makeup and your wigs and your life and uh i hope you fed your babies and and i hope you can find you a man and get a man and you know what i'm saying you don't have to come and, and thanks to your glasses and, and, and i understand like that. that i hope you do get a man i understand it because you didn't deny you didn't have a man <laughs> you want a man yes or no do you want a man uh, Jesus Christ is my man. That's okay, man most single women say that when they had a man. But I ask you a question. I ain't talking about what you have with Jesus. Do you physically want a man, a human being, in your house? Do you yes have, or no? I'm asking you, you a, a question. Do you want it? If you don't want it, that's fine. But I can guarantee Do you, you have you a man need other than your. I roommate? ask you, you need one. I know you will want one right now and make you nice and warm, and you don't have to play with that rose or your fingers or Vaseline fingers up, fingers up with some Congo with some grease. You, do you want a man? You I ask you a question. You, know you want a husband? I ask you a question. Do you want a husband that's gonna provide for you, be a leader and a true leader? Do you want a husband? Yes or no? All right. 
Bow Wow. Oh. But, but in conclusion, can you stop I, I all of that? I um, can't do your conclusion. You don't even know what you want. You say Jesus is your husband. You and doing. that's a lie. Because if Jesus was your husband, why are you screwing all these men and getting all these children without having no daddy, no father, no husband? Do you how you going to say background? Jesus is your husband and you're still screwing Pookie and Ray Ray and these thugs and getting pregnant on food stuff and fail fat? And now you want to act like you don't want to say that hard. Jesus is your husband. That's a lie. Pookie and Ray Ray is right there. I know you got a man in that basement. I know you got a man with an ankle bracelet. I know you got a man watching TV, eating popcorn and donuts in the basement. I already know it. You ain't got to tell me. Do you hear any kids? Don't worry. They sleep. You gave us some melatonin. I'm not on my parents, You EBT <laughs> type of parents. Give y'all children NyQuil and melatonin so y'all can get it in with Pookie and Ray Ray. You the only one that got kids. I don't have no type of kids. kids. But I do want to ask nieces. another call. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for keeping up with me. Bye. Honestly, I do. No, bye. Thank you. And you have a blessed one, okay? Okay, okay. I'll stop all the shouting. When you take off that when you take off that makeup. Out. I can promise you that. Another caller that called in, so we called him back and then we done. Uh -huh. Hey, what's up? You live on that Wally show. I shut my Hey, how you doing? I'm well. How are you? I'm so good. You sound so sad. You work today? I sound so what? You sound I so sound so what? You sound sad. Like, how you doing? Oh, for sure. You sound a little sad. I'm doing well. How are you doing, Wally? Okay, I know you sound tired. I'm doing fine. I hope you can pick up your... No, I ain't tired at all. Oh, you ain't tired at all? Okay, you probably just smoke mm -hmm. some cigarettes or some, drink some liquor? I don't smoke no damn cigarettes. Oh, okay. You don't drink or anything like that? I do. Oh. I drink just like you do on occasion. Oh, on occasion. I would say. So you you a producer. Yeah, what was it? Mm -hmm. So what you want to talk about? Uh, sister. Everything. Mm. Well, to be honest, I really want to talk about your boy, Larry, and CTV. Oh, let's talk about Larry. Is that okay? That's fine with me. Man, man. no. Hey, listen. Listen. Now, I find it ironic how. I don't know if you saw it, but you probably did because you'll be on top of everything. How he goes on there and he starts to talk about, well, this is how you become a sugar baby. And I was a sugar baby, this, that, and the third. Let me ask your opinion. Do you think that they will reconcile? You think they'll reconcile CTV and Larry? Because CTV was hurt, honey. You hear me? He was hurt to the core. Um. Uh. Well. 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 That's up to them. I don't care. Both of them got something in common. One got the HP. One got the HI. Okay. I think I know what HP is. Yeah, HIV, you know, HIV, you know, it's so many H's. Okay, yeah, right. It's hard so that to was my up. main, like, uh, yeah, because he, it's like, it was a whole thing because I was watching earlier, and I know you was keeping up with it because one of them was talking crap about you, and that's when I really, like, I, I lightweight quit watching them because I'm like, y'all don't even give them a chance. You know what I'm saying? They don't give Wally a chance. And I think he sicked I think, oh, fuck it. Oh, well, excuse me. Forget it. I think that Larry was sticking him on you to, like, trying to quiet you or whatever. We're not. But it didn't work. Now it's backfiring on him. So that's why I was asking you about that because I know they was calling you all kind of other stuff. Yeah. But you're and, growing. And we're growing because guess what? Yeah, we ain't got them problems. We ain't got that sickness. They got the sickness. They they losing the weight. They're getting the diagnosis with the yeah, yeah, they yeah, get that. Get they mm, doing they, they 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 dealing with that. And see, you ain't gotta say nothing. Just look at them fall down. Look at them. Sick, losing weight, crying. We we in the yes, gym. Sir. We healthy. We smile. No, you looking good though. Looking you good. Yes. We ain't gotta worry about them. They supposed to be witches. Why don't he talk to the African Zulu guy? Mm -hmm. No, he supposed to be so African Zulu, the Hutus and the Tutsis. Talk to them gods. So, so look, 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 look. So saying that to say, he was all in your face talking about baby daddy, baby daddy, yeah. this, then the third. 
And that was, ain't that, I, ain't, I mean, how do, that's what I'm asking. How do you feel about that? He was all in your face talking about baby daddy and friend mm. and all of that. And now look at him because he went back to Melting Pot McCray. Now you don't went back over there to Melting Pot McCray. And it's it's just so ironic because the first person I thought I don't like see how they play, see how they play. Yeah, they play. And, and he, I was watching some, I was watching some commentary earlier about it. And the first thing I thought when I seen that boy crying, because I know he and you were cool, y'all were y'all were cool or whatever. And the first thing I thought about said, "See how he tried to play Wally? See how he tried to play Wally? And Wally, yeah, you be all, you be doing your commentary, or whatever. But you, you don't ever directly like. You don't, you don't really give that kill shot. You know, you you'll talk your stuff or whatnot." But you don't really get that kill shot. A boy trying to get a kill shot is like you were just yeah, because excuse me, like you were just really nuts. You know the reason why and that's not the case is because there's no need to be upset when they want to go off course and lie and all of that. CTV picked up a spirit of defending pedal behavior. Then you're sleeping with a guy that allegedly is sick, infected. Mm -hmm. Then you got to defend this. That guy is not. I told the brother. I said, Larry ain't loyal to you, stupid. He the most. Oh, you told him that. I told him that publicly on the air. Cause I can't call him on the phone. Anything mm -hmm. I say publicly, they all watch. When Larry sat in between of Storm on Road trying to sing like Drake, and no streaming Armand Wiggins, when he sat in the middle of those two queens, and was giving them the clicks and the views and didn't do a sit down with conscience. He gave him a good old nasty yeah. avatar. That's what I knew. Larry is not faithful and dedicated to, to CT. It's a one. Okay. So I know what else I thought about. You it's remember, not mutual. You remember Jesus told Peter, he said, you would deny me three times for the cock crow or what the he crow, did. whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. And Peter so look, said, no, he I denied won't do him it. on listen. And when they confronted he Peter, Peter him start on. cussing. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. He denied, he denies that man. So let me ask you this. Why do you think that he denies CTV so much in public? Why? Because Why do you, I mean, like, Larry is got the money. I don't give a damn about it. See, you're you is a pawn to my pedo dookie operation. I need a bigger pond. So it's pond. some kind of like fetish need, or something. Right, I need a bigger like, pond like William McCray to help me take down Bishop T.D. Bishop T.D. Yeah. so he can swallow up that account and yeah. send me about $2 million yeah. with Manassas with I never allegations like against that. Larry. So he got to join in with more people to post about Bishop T.D. and that have failed. That's you're right because nobody else. You, you, I think about it. You never heard about nothing else since he tried to get that Mansa boy or whatever. I don't mean to bring him a name, but Manassa. bring that boy up. He never and that never and that, Manassa, come on here. Manassa, he, whatever his name really is, stuck. is down low, and he loved man parts. Yeah. It never really stuck. So me watching that live, hey, oh boy, was hurt. Um. CTV will hurt, you hear me? To the core, that man will cry. You know when somebody belly cry and when they really hurt? That boy was hurt. He was hurt. So he gonna and try and cover it. So look, McCray, he gonna try and cover it up. With, William McCray he tried to cover it up as well. I, I'm he a sugar said it baby. On the platform I'm a sugar baby. That you got it. I don't care. My thing is, it's not what William said, "That's bad. I thought about you, but when he was saying, when he was doing all that, but, I thought about right, you. but what? Because I said he trying to make why so crazy. The thing about it is, mm -hmm. the silence of your friends hit even harder than your so-called enemies. Larry he's Reed's on denying him. He he's a friend. He's supposed to be, but you sat there and let somebody say that your men." T got H infected, Jenny, and you don't Jenny. challenge that and say, "Brother, you can do that." That to me, it was wrong. a fake. It was the fake. It was the fake. Um, surprise for me. Who are you talking about? You see, he said, "Who are you talking fake. about?" He uh, at, uh, uh, who are you talking about? It was a fake. Um, it was a fake concern. Who are you talking about? Conscious nigga, you know exactly who he was talking about. 
You exactly who's about. And why are y'all so buddy buddy all of a sudden? What was the payoff? Come on here. First thing I thought about was you, Wiley. First thing I thought about was like, see, they try to drag him so bad without saying his name. They didn't want to say your name for shit. I'm mean, sorry. They didn't want to say your name for nothing to not bring no traction to you. But we know you have been on top of it with Levantre. Now, now all of a sudden, CTV wants to talk about, uh, he indirectly said it was, he was like, uh, you hurt these people and it was true, but I was windmilling for you. I promise you I had you in the back of my mind the whole time. Go on. If you want to make it right, if you listen to this CTV, which I know you probably are, if you really want to make it right or you really want to get some get back, go on on Wally Show. Get on Wally Channel and you tell it on Wiley show. Because y'all try to make it seem like he so was, like you were so didn't know what you was talking about. Get on Wiley show. Yeah. And, and make it right. Make it right. But yeah. You know if you want to make it right, get on Wiley show and make it right, honey. I yeah, I thought about you the whole time I was watching it, while he would boo-hoo and talk about, and then you want to know how to be a sugar. There's different kinds of sugar babies. There's different tiers. Emotionally, physically, no, nah, nigga, F all that. Nigga, get on there and apologize to your baby daddy. Remember, baby daddy? It's, 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 I remember. It's really sad, and I'm glad that you brought this point up. But and also, to the people that's listening, it's the fact he gave Sir William McCray a platform in the first place. Oh, yeah. Sir William didn't say it in his interview <sighs> with the other conscious, I mean, other content creator. My point is, Larry is his influence is dwindling and yes it is and and he's not yes i'm watching it it's it's dwindling people don't care his his word don't hold weight these allegations and i believe that trinidad lover devil the nail in the coffin yep i believe nobody when that trinidad lover said i got infected with hpv and gave it to my girlfriend Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's nobody that will say something like that for clout. That and then the a Trinidad lover didn't find out until the girlfriend found right. out. Right. Because you'd have never you probably would have found out a couple about 60 days later. Right. I've been so, watching, honey. So, right. I've been that, watching. Right. So that Vincent thing and then the Trinidad, that was in for him. So Larry is kind of hard, and it looking like his money ain't long enough <clears throat> to buy people off. Armand Wiggins right now, he kind of like don't want it. And I told him, I'm going to say this publicly. You interview him, I'm really coming out to Fox Soul, and I'm going to tag him. Fox Mm -hmm, Soul, mm y'all got a person that's interviewing a panel that did something to a 14-year-old person. You got a host on there that's interviewing saying the man is innocent. What do y'all got to say about it? Only thing you got to do is go back. Excuse me. Only thing you got to do is go back and listen to see. Oh. Hurry up and get it before it go all away. Mm-hmm. All you gotta do is go back to his last one or two um uh lives, and he said it. He said, "I, I'm paraphrasing here." He said, "Um, I'll windmill for you, even though you were wrong." Or he said something to that extent, like, "Oh, that pretty much." Said. Long story short, I lied for you. My thing that, is, I don't yeah. want to believe none of that. Until you come out, Levante was telling the truth and put Levante name CCD out there. CCD kind of confirmed it, right? But you got to put an address on it. Stop all it. Don't want to name names. Yep. I'm with that. Yep. You got his yep. name and right. the title. Right. And say he right. did. Larry did that. Levante. CCD mm-hmm. said mm-hmm. you did all that. Oh, he pissed. He pissed CTV off. You hear me? You but he, said, he pissed him off when he got on there. With the melting pot, yeah, he got on there and he pissed him off with them long on there. And he want to talk about you ain't, you ain't. Um, I don't give a damn if you gay or not. I don't care. But if you want to get on there and say, uh, uh, William acts so homophobic, but you are emulating everything about it. Oh yeah, that's man. church. The church queens, church queens do that. Church oh, queens see, is gay see. men in the church. They pick up that idealism, but. And they go so. I it. think he paid the lease for him because you know he was leaving from uh pillar to post and hotel to hotel. Of course, he got Atlanta. he got. I think on. he paid a cheap lease that didn't pay no more. That didn't cost no more than probably like three thousand dollars. Yeah, it, it, you it, paid it, probably six to twelve it, months. It, it, a lot you of got him somewhere stable to stay. 
and you got him back on your team and you're probably screwing him again or whatever. But Larry definitely has lost that weight. And when Larry when and when wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. When when the long nail man, Daddy Grace, whatever, Daddy Grace Jr. was like, mm, I heard your friend got uh got that package. Why didn't you be like, now hold up now? We ain't talking about him. You ain't gotta do all that. Larry is full of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I'm so glad you called him out. Everything you said came, it, it manifested. It did. It's gonna manifest. And I'm so proud of you because you stayed on top of it. And only thing CTV gotta do is come back home. Yeah. Like you, you come back home, back to a baby daddy and tell him, baby daddy, which is you, uh, you was right. You was right. And, and 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 I need your help because you can help reach the masses because you do it. Only thing I do is like I need you, baby daddy. <laughs> I need you, baby daddy, to help make right this wrong because he was wrong for trying to make you seem a a, a kind of way when you were right the whole time. Right. That's all I really got to say. And thank you. That was my segment. That's what I was really watching and for because I know how they try to drag you and I know how you were point you were dead on. So. Good work, good work, and keep your eye out on them and everything. Thank you for yeah. that amazing support because you told the truth, and thank you for staying woke to the issues. And mm -hmm. thank you for being mm -hmm. a true producer, y'all. Thank you. If y'all, if y'all in this uh, in this chat, if y'all ain't Larry Reed, ain't right. He is not right. That that nigga. He, um, that dude, he did. He's not right, y'all. He's not. He's not the uh, image of Christ. He's not the image of Christianity. He don't don't follow that crap. It's not right. He ain't a hundred for real. Him and William McCray is clowns. Uh, uh, William McCray even wear the hat and the only thing he missing is a big red nose. That's all he missing because he got the hat and the bow tie. Everything else is is foolery. That's not that's not Christ like, you know. I suggest you uh. Learn for yourself the way of Christ and, and, and you take it upon yourself and get what you get out of it. And, you know, that's it. But good job, Wiley. Thank and you, I hope CTV apologizes to you because we definitely oh, owe you. Oh. CTV, you watching. You watching anything that got to do with Larry and you watching. Apologize to your baby daddy. Yeah. And he don't want none of that dick. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. On that note, mm -hmm. thank you, ma'am. Uh, we want to. Thank everybody for uh, coming on the broadcast today uh, to all the callers that called in. We'll be back on tomorrow. Uh, we will be doing a broadcast tomorrow. Uh, we want to thank everybody for coming through. Don't forget. We'll be in Vegas, April 26th through the 28th. Uh, Vegas is like I said, is right around the corner. Um, li really looking forward to it. Uh, the Palace station hotel casino, for those that just want to just see me, link up, take a picture. And then for those that hanging out, y'all don't know where we go once we link up at the Palace Station Hotel Casino. <clears throat> y'all don't know where we'll be going. I have a meeting um, next week with Couture Base so we can get like a, a thing of activities so what we can do for those three days for the 26th to 27th and the 28th to 28th. Um, we would love to see you all there. Um, again, um, this is our first meet and greet together. Um, it was um, Couture Bay first one. This is like my second one. Um, and I'm honored to do it with this beautiful, beautiful sister. And I can't wait um, to see y'all in person. I've been in the gym today. I got to go back tomorrow. Uh, it's been amazing. We reached 35,000 subscribers too. So it's been an honor. Shout out to people that have contributed uh, the $35. Some of y'all have done it to the Cash App. Some of y'all have done it to the Zale and we we done some things for the show and we got some more stuff to do. We had to get editing equipment. We got to get, you know, we got to get a computer guy to look at our computer to make sure everything is updated and, and everything. Um, love you all so very much because we, we were really working on this particular broadcast. This show is a awesome show and we're traveling. So we will be in Atlanta, um, Houston, um, we're trying to get New York on the docket. So we need your resources combined with my resources. Um, so we can travel more and do shows. I would love to do a show in New York. I would love to do a show, um, in Atlanta. Um, I would love to visit Virginia, um, New York, et cetera. 
but that take resources. You got to play for plane tickets, and plane tickets not cheap. Hotels ain't cheap. Airbnb's not cheap. From the result res, resort fees and fees for this, fees for that. So uh, your contributions do do not go wasted. Um, we put it on there. Um, we save it. We use it when we need to use it. But we thank everybody that have contributed to the broadcast. Um, thank you to the new subscribers. We have so many new subscribers. Welcome to those that view our broadcast. Um, like I said, we wake up about five in the morning every day. Even well, today I did get up about five in the morning and I slept until like six thirty-seven. <laughs> This is my off day. And then tomorrow we uh, got some plans to uh, post and everything uh, on our broadcast. OK, uh, Chicago, we do. We have been in Chicago for the DNC, the Democratic National Convention, um, which is coming up in a couple of months. <clears throat> so we will be in Ch uh, Chicago for that. So um, looking forward to it. We love you all so much. <clears throat> this has been a great broadcast. Join our membership. We was going to do a Zoom, but we were so busy with a lot of stuff. So we're going to try to give y'all a Zoom um, sometime next week, um, probably like on a weekday, because um, some of you all don't like Sundays because um, some people have to work. So I'm going to try to do a day other than Sunday. So I'm going to put a poll out <clears throat> to get you all uh, for the members only because it's a lot of stuff I do want to talk about via members only. So really looking forward to it. Little black boy, you're beautiful. Little black girl, you are enough. When times get hard, always remember to put God first. Follow us on X, a.k.a. Twitter, at Wiley Show. Facebook page, The Wiley Show. Twitch, The Wiley Show TV. Instagram, at Wiley Show. Go to our website, www.wileythetroll.com. Love you all. Little black boy, you beautiful. Little black girl, you are enough. When times get hard, always remember to put God first. All right.